review this example again. Style says the thumbnail is to be 10% of the page. So that's why they're that size. The images, the thumbnails, all have an on-click event, which means that something's going to happen when the page is clicked on. What's going to happen? We're going to find the thing on the page that has an ID of big, and we are going to set the source attribute. Source attribute is down here, right? We're going to change it to either 1, 2, or 3. So if we click on image 3, we make the big image. Image 3. So it says, though we are going in manually and changing the web page, typing in image 3 um, as the source of that image. All right? We set the initial value of it to be 1, so that's why when the page first loads, we get the lion picture, this specific lion picture. But as I click on it, it is though someone is going in and making a change to that HTML page to change the SRC attribute of that image, right? The SRC attribute of the image is what controls what image we're seeing, all right? And we're changing it from whatever it was before to whatever image we've clicked on. So in this case, if we clicked on the orangutan, we get image three in there, and that's what we have. Questions about this? Great example of interactivity. There are alternative ways I could do this, of course. All right. One thing I could do, for example, is I could actually have different copies of the, of the image as thumbnails. In other words, I resize the thumbnails via CSS to make them 10%. I could go in into an image editor uh, and, and make a version of the page, a uh, version of the image that was 10% the size uh, of, of uh, or, or that was whatever size I wanted to. All right. The advantage of this, though, is that image, depending on the device, it gets bigger or smaller. So if you have more screen size, it makes it bigger or smaller. All right. So I guess the other way to do this would be to have separate versions of the picture that were thumb nails and then separate versions for the full size and you could accomplish that for uh, uh, via uh, an image editor. Why would you do it one way or another? If you had a whole lot of thumbnails you might want to go and edit and make smaller versions of them. That way you're not downloading just as you know uh, an extremely large um, um, set of image files. Because even if I resize the image uh, via CSS, I'm still downloading the full number of bytes for that image. So in the case of this, three images, they add up to, let's see how many bytes for those three images. You're talking about maybe 300K. On today's fast connections, uh, that's not very... That's not, that's not that much, maybe 350K, give or take. Um, so that's not very, uh, very much. Um, so it's probably okay to, 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 to use a full-size image scaled down as uh, the thumbnail. Questions about that? Let's look at the second version. And this will be exciting because I, I can't remember what the second version is. I remember how the second version is different. So I'll be surprised along with you. Ah. Here's the difference. Notice it's based on a different user event. So I don't notice my fingers are up. I'm not clicking on it. As I roll my mouse over the different images, they change. So I'm using a different event. So the JavaScript and everything else about the page is going to be very similar. The difference is going to be I'm using a different event. So let's look at the code here. Have the same thing again as I could make that 10%. The difference is, is I have 
the on, instead of the on click, I have the on mouse over method. All right, and on mouse over is a different event that says not when I click on the image, but when I put my mouse on the image. All right. One thing that's confusing to some students is they will think that they will need to put the event on this image because this is the image that changes. That's not the case. All right. You put the event on whatever element of the page that you are interacting with. All right. So in this case, I'm interacting with the thumbnails, so that's the one that gets the event. I'm not interacting with this. The user doesn't do anything with this. The page itself changes it to the correct image. Which way do you prefer? I, I, guess, I guess it depends on the particular problem that, that you're looking at or the particular page that you're looking at. The mouse over or the um, um, the clicking, either one of them, as long as it's clear to the user what to do. You know, if I go to a page, typically I'll put my mouse over a thumbnail. If nothing happens, then I'll click it. And I think it's that simple enough for most people will get that. Uh, if not, you can always put some instructions. Yes? Does it change um, for a user that's using a captioning tool? That's an excellent question. Um, does, it change the, uh, does it change the alt attribute? Um, the way I have it coded, it would not. But the way I have it coded, it says picture of animal at a zoo. So it's going to keep that for all of them. If I wanted to change that, what I could do is I could put a second JavaScript instruction here. And say all equals... picture of lion. And I could do that for all of them. All right. So remember, the all attribute, again, is just another attribute on that HTML element. And I can change it with JavaScript just like I can set it originally in the HTML. So if I was doing this, I would have this say picture of lion. If I moused over the first one, it would change it to picture of lion, which, of course, it is. For the second one, I would give it a different caption, you know, picture of lion on rock or whatever. I'll change it to say second picture of lion. And then finally, I will change the last one. say picture of orangutan. But that, I mean, that, that is a great question. Uh, because when you are developing these web pages, you do want to make them uh, as accessible um, as possible. And so for people that are using uh, a screen reader, um, you would want to take that into account as well and not just change the, the image, but also change the alt attribute for that. So, unfortunately, since we're not doing a screen reader here, we can't see the effect, but now it's going and it's changing the, the alt attribute as well. So the screen reader would pick that up. Again, remember, it's not a coincidence that this says source and this says all. All right? The, you're welcome. These, thanks. These are the same attributes that we set via our HTML code, all right, or our CSS code, all right, exact same attributes. Um, these are just um, th these are just an interactive way to change those. Just like we could change the display property, it was the same display property, all right. Um, we just used uh, JavaScript to set it instead of the um, instead of the um, heavy coding it in the CSS. Now, one thing that we talked about last time is we talked about avoiding duplicate code. All right? We've said that it's a good idea wherever possible to avoid duplicate code. 
And especially when we added the alt attribute in, we now have some duplicate code, right? What is the difference between these three on mouse over events? Well, this is different for each of them, and this is different for each of them. Other than that, the code's identical. We say document get element by ID big dot src equals something. Document get element by ID big alt equals something. So we could, whenever you have code that's duplicated or very nearly duplicated, we could put that in a function. So what I could do, I'll do it on this one, is I can create a JavaScript function that does both those things, and I will give it an argument at runtime that will tell it specifically what it is I want to change. So I'll put my script tag. The script tag simply tells the browser that you are now in JavaScript land. And I'm going to accept two arguments. The value of the image and the value for the alt. Instead of always changing it to 1.jpg, I'm going to change it to whatever the value of that first argument is. And I'm going to change the alt to be changed to whatever the value of that second argument is. And then when I call that, I'm going to use my image name, or function name rather, to simply say, Change image was the first argument, the name of the image that I want to change. Was the second argument the alt that I want to change? So let's change these other ones as well. this still works. When I get done playing with it here. So this one we want another picture of a lion in image two. This one we want image three and picture of orangutan.
file that we selected. All right. Let's say we want to put a border around the thumbnail that we selected. one of these a thumbnail. Give, give each one of these an ID, thumb one, thumb two, and thumb three. Now, this is a little bit tricky. So bear with me, if, and if you don't follow this completely, um, it's okay. You know, ask whatever questions you want, but keep in mind that I don't expect you to have a real deep understanding about JavaScript. I just want to get you familiar with that. All right, notice a, a pattern here. Image 1 belongs to thumbnail 1. Image 2 belongs to thumbnail 2. Image 3 belongs to thumbnail 3. So guess what? I could pass to the function simply the number that I want. And I could do something to the big image, and I could do something with the thumbnail. So I'm going to change this, not to pass 1.jpg, 2.jpg, 3.jpg, but simply 1, 2, and 3. And then I can concatenate on to the end of the image .jpg. All right? Because I've changed it to give a number of the image, all right, not the full name of the image. So when I put my mouse over this guy, I'm simply sending a 1 up there. Well, what's the name of the image that I want to change it to? 1 plus JPEG. Let's make sure that still works. It does. All right. There's an interesting thing about this. Remember we talked about server-side coding. In server-side coding, you have a program that writes your web pages for you. All right? Well, you might say, why did I bother learning HTML if my programs are going to write the pages for you? Well, you need to know how the pages are supposed to look so that you can write the code to produce the right HTML. A lot of times when you write server-side code, you're going to have a bunch of the same thing. I might be pulling from a database a list of thumbnails. I might not know how many thumbnails they are. Well, what am I going to call the first thumbnail? Well... If I come up with a logical scheme, like the first thumbnail is called 1.jpg, 2.jpg, 3.jpg, and so on, then I can make this work uh, a lot easier. All right? Now, how do I put a border around the thumbnail? Well, I could do something like this. Document get element by ID, thumb, but it's not just thumb, it's thumb plus the value of the image number. So if I give it a 1, it's going to change thumb 1. If I give it a 2, it's going to change it to image 2, and so on. What about that do I want to change? I want to change its style. And what about the style? I want to change the border. I'm going to try the shortcut method, and we'll see if that works. If that doesn't work, we'll change each, each thing individually. 1px black solid. It does. If so I put my mouse over it, it gets the, gets the border. I want to make it more dramatic because we can't barely see that border. Let's make it 10 pixels black solid. Put my mouse over it. Boom. There's the thumbnail. What 
don't you like about that, though? It stays there. So how are we going to get rid of this? Well, let's remember the recipe. First thing that we're going to consider is what is going to be the action? What's the user action going to be that is going to cause us to get rid of that border? On mouse out. On mouse out, right. So in other words, we put our mouse on there, yeah, we want to put the border on. If they remove the mouse, then we want to take the border away. And that is on mouse out. All right. So we have to put another event on this guy. And that event will be on mouse out. If I spell it right. And I'm going to say, I'm going to call the function change image back. So change image back the way it used to be. And I'm going to do this for the other two things as well. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to pass a number of what image I want to change it to. I'm just going to copy this function. I'm going to change the border back to zero pixels. All right. I can keep it as zero pixels black and solid. It doesn't matter what the color and style of the border are if it's zero pixels wide. Right. I'm also going to fix these. These alts. Because it raised a good... We actually could copy the thumbnail, the, the alt from the thumbnail to the alt of the big picture when they did the mouse over, but we won't do that example. That would be a good challenge if you uh, wanted to try coding that. That way I wouldn't have to hard code these things. All right, so my function change image back will get rid of the border. This will work. 
this doesn't work, I'm going to give it up. The camera's not here anymore to see me mess up, so. I'll just, well, I got this camera going, so. I, I guess that won't work. What I'm going to do is, when I add 20 pixels to the border, I'm going to take away 20 pixels from the padding. mouse out, I'm going to set it back to 20. I think that will take care of it. That's one of those little things that drive you crazy sometimes. So I think that works. Yeah. Keep the same height on it. Alright, and do that. Okay, if you didn't get all that stuff that I started adding on once I started putting the border on it, don't really worry about it. All right, the basics of this were, were covered in the first part of the example. Uh, let's look at the menu now. All right, any questions about this? Um, okay, let's close this out. Uh, let's look at the menu. Here's the menu. There's the menu. I have, again, two examples here. All right. This would be a menu um, that um, expands and contracts based on whether you click it or not. This is similar to what you have in Windows File Explorer. So like in Windows File Explorer, you have this. If I go into some place, actually, I don't have this. Well, you'll see what it does. I'm sure you've seen things like it. The way this works is the plus sign means that it can be expanded. All right. So, computer information system, health services, social sciences, and sciences are all menus that can be expanded. When I click on them, 
it expands to a list of options underneath that. And that changes from a plus to a minus. What a minus means is if I click on it, it will contract. All right? Now, I don't have these as links, all right? But they could just as well be links as well, all right? So I could use this for my navigation and have links to different pages for that, all right? Um, and we'll, we'll take a look at this one first, and then we'll do the second menu example on Thursday, all right? So let's look at the code for this. First of all, let's, let's think of what, let's, let's see if we can think on how this works. What's the HTML? What kind of HTML do you think we have here? What are some of the HTML tags that are on this page? See if you can guess without looking. Okay, this is probably in a nav. This is probably a paragraph in a section. Okay. What are these things? Those, uh, list items. Those are probably on order list that contain list items. And there's probably actually nested lists, right? So in other words, this is a list inside oops, that nest item. List item. Why did I say nest item? Because it's nested. Okay. All right. So I probably have sort of like two levels of lists here. The top level, which is the main topics, and the second level, which are the subtopics. And again, those could be links. I just was lazy and didn't make them links. All right, so I could make my navigation this way. So that's probably the HTML. The CSS does what? Well, I probably float these. I do, right? That's a sure sign of floating when you get to a certain width, it drops down below. All right? So I have, the, I have the nav floated. I have this floated. I have this a certain size. I have this a certain size. And it's based on percentages. The main list is always visible. The sub lists start out as being hidden. So that's probably the HTML and CSS for this page. All right? Now, what's the JavaScript? JavaScript probably has on click. And that's about it, right? The on click's a little more clever, though, than the on click was before. Because the on click does what? If I click on computer information system, it does one of two things. If I click on it the first time, it shows the submenu. If I click on it the second time, it hides it. So the on-click is smart enough to know if the submenu is being shown or not. And it just makes it the opposite. If it's shown, it makes it hidden. If it's hidden, it makes it shown. All right? So let's take a look and, and see, uh, see what the HTML, CSS are, and then get into the JavaScript. Well, sure enough, we have our nav. We have a section. We have float left. 30%, minimum width 200 pixels. Float left width 60%. UL, list style type none. A class of level 2 has a display of none. So sure enough, our nav consists of a U, one UL with list items. And part of the list item is a submenu. And the submenu has a class of level 2. So that's what makes those invisible when you first bring up the page. Because all the submenus have a class of level 2. All right? I have a marker that starts out as a plus. What does that plus mean? The plus means that it can be expanded. What does a minus mean? It means that it is already expanded and it can be contracted. So I use a little plus or minus next to the stop, uh, next to the, the bullet item, next, next to the, the line, list item, to say whether it can be expanded or not. So 
So, if I click on this, I call a function that says handle submenu, submenu 1. All right? Let's look at that handle submenu, submenu 1. I have an if statement. Now, what is an if statement? An if statement is a way to do different things depending on conditions. So if we think about this, what do we want to do? If the submenu is shown, we want to hide it. All right? If the submenu is hidden, we want to show it. So what does that mean in CSS terms? Well, if the display is blocked, for that submenu, it means it's being shown, right? Because we're making the display field none or block. Remember, that's how we hid, hide it, hid, hide it, hid, hide it, hid, hid it, hid. That's how we hid things before. That's how we hid our spoilers and showed our spoilers. We made the submen, we made, we made something have a display of inline or none. Here we're making it block or none. So if the style display of the submenu that we're looking at is block, that means it's shown. All right? And if it's shown, what do we want to do? We want to hide it. How do we hide it? We set the submenu uh, display to none. That hides it. And we change the marker. from a plus to a minus. So if you click on this, we call submenu1. Submenu1, it looks to see if it's displayed. If it's displayed, it sets submenu1, which is this guy, says it's displayed to none. So if it's shown, it hides it. And then it takes that submenu1, adds the word marker on the end, and changes the inner HTML to a plus. Well, the inner HTML is whatever code is between the start and end tag. So that's the span with an inner HTML, and we can, we can uh, change that to a plus or minus or, or whatever. Now, if it's not block, it means it's not being displayed. And therefore, what do we do? We change the style of it to block, so it becomes displayed and we change the marker to the negative sign. Mike, which ID is being passed in again? The ID of the submenu that we want to show or hide. So if I click on the first item, it passes in submenu sub one. So it looks to see if this is being shown. If it's being shown, it hides it. If it's not being shown, it shows it. And then it takes the name of that ID, adds the word marker to it, to point to this, and we can change that from a plus to a minus, or a minus to a plus. Now this one, we're looking at submenu 2. It's either shown or hidden, and based on if it's shown, we're going to hide it, and we're going to change the submenu name plus the word marker. So I followed some conventions when I did this. I made sure every marker that I put there was the name of the submenu plus the word marker there. Then I could be clever and I could program it to say, hey, just take whatever the submenu is and add the word marker onto it. So this is pretty, pretty easy to maintain if I were to add another one. If I were to add another submenu, thing with the submenu and submenu, I'd call it submenu 5, submenu marker 5, submenu 5, and it would be good to go. Alright. Now, one thing I can do, or you can do, and it's a good way to understand this, is to put comments in the code. Alright. Comments are like little instructions that tell you what the program is doing. And comments start with the two slashes. So I could put a comment in that says if visible make it hidden if 
invisible show it. Whatever words I would think would explain the code to me. And you put the slash slash in front of it and that's a comment. Now the one thing I want to talk about again is JavaScript is much touchier than HTML. HTML, the browser gives it the good old college try and tries to display the page and, and even if you get something wrong, it, it, it might do a pretty good job displaying your page. JavaScript, if it runs into an error, it doesn't know what to do. So for example, if I were to mistakenly put submenu L instead of submenu 1, all right, what would happen? Well, go and do this, click on it, nothing happens. Well, how do you figure out what's wrong? I could stare at the code, or I could go and look at more tools, developer tools, console, and see that on line 14 cannot read property style of null. Now, that's not terribly descriptive. It's, it's not like, hey, you called it submenu L instead of submenu 1. But I could go back and figure out what I did. Line 14 is this line here. So this line here is blowing up, and it can't find the style of the thing that I said to change the style of or to look at the style of. Well, that happened when I clicked on the first thing. All right. Well, what argument am I using when I click on the first thing? I'm using submenu L. Oh, that's right. It's not submenu L. It's submenu 1. So if I go and then save it, refresh it, now I click on that, no more error. So use the resources that you have. And one of the resources that you have is to look at the console. Um, and again, that's in Chrome. Other browsers have a similar thing, but it's located maybe in a slightly different place to find. All right. But use the tools you have in, in, you know, uh, in trying to solve what you're doing. Uh, um, you know, detectives look for evidence. You know, they don't just guess who committed a crime, right? So when your code doesn't work, look for evidence. Look for the signs. And one of the biggest signs that you can get is the actual error message that the browser gives you. And that, that a lot of times will at least point you in the right direction. Sometimes those error messages are hard to read, but it's better to do that than to just guess. All right, Thursday. Thursday we'll go over the second menu example. All right, uh, depending on time, we might play around. We might come up with some other sort of menu examples or, or just other things or tweak some of these. Uh, and I'll do my best to answer questions about uh, the capabilities of JavaScript and more about JavaScript. It would be a good idea if you brought your project in on Thursday so that we can review it, we can spend some time in lab, you can show it to me, and that way I can give you some feedback before you even turn it in. What's more, you can show it to other members of the class and they can give you feedback and they can learn from you, you can learn from them, and it'll work out fine. All right, that's all I have. We'll see you in lab. The project is due tomorrow in Canvas, I think it says. Uh, it, it should be due, um, let me double check, I might have the wrong date on that. All right, thanks.